Hello Sioux Falls and welcome to planning preview for the month of August. Uh, my name is Jason Bieber with the planning office at the City of Sioux Falls and joining me as always is Kurt Johnson, our uh, chairman of our planning commission. How are you doing today, Kurt? Great, Jason. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you always forward these in advance of these, mm -hmm. uh, of these uh, uh, filming, so to say, and I just get excited when I start seeing some of the lineup. And our first item that we're going to talk mm. about today, or kind of this whole first page, as a matter of fact, is kind of emphasizing the fact that we're going with more residential, more residential yep. development in town. And I just would love to, you know, kick this off with this sure. first one. Looks like we're going from a C3 commercial zoning down, mm. not down, but alternatively to a live work designation. And why don't you tell us a little bit about this project? Yeah, so this is kind of a parcel that's at that intersection of 85th and Minnesota where we have kind of a lot of commercial there right now on the southwest, northwest, northeast, and southeast corner. So sure. this would be going directly east on the northeast corner. Kind of that last parcel, um, or one of the last parcels that's gonna be really close to Veterans Parkway as that comes looping through to the east of this one. And the applicants look in that entire parcel is zoned commercial, but one of the good things that the applicants look into is is really maybe trying to do some more mixed use that we're looking for. So instead of maybe a single floor retail use, they're looking at doing a little bit of retail on one of the buildings and then a little bit of retail still fronting 85th Street, but then being able to go up with three or more floors of apartments, which is really, you know, from your perspective and my perspective to get that more dense and to get mixed use is really what we'd rather see. So. Yes, absolutely. It just kind of mm -hmm. helps fill up the, the area and provide, you know, kind of the relief yep. in this residential, uh, you know, shortage, yeah. shortcoming, whatever you want to say. There's a lot of demand for it, and this is a great way to solve yep. that. Absolutely. Um, our next item looks like we're going from a, a twin home zoning to a single family zoning. So, again, uh, mm -hmm. re decreasing the density, but uh, still a very popular uh, parcel type. Why don't you tell us about this one? Yeah, it's kind of funny because this is the complete opposite. So the first one outskirts of town, right? Sure. Apartments, um, which we need. And this one is actually in more of our core area that we've been looking at. And this is uh, from C. Coglin, Keller Forbes, doing kind of what she does best and really reutilizing some housing stocks from another area and moving a house into an existing lot that's maybe pretty difficult to uh, develop unless we can go down to that traditional single family zoning district. Um, but this will then provide another single family ho a home for a, a family kind of in one of our core areas, so. Very nice. Um, our next parcel looks like we're going from brand new kind of kind of development from ag uh, to the RD1 mm -hmm. uh, on the west side. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this parcel? Yeah, so this is about as, as far west as you can go on 41st Street west of Ellis. Um, this is sure. just another lot where they're continuing to build another twin home as part of that development. And if you haven't been out that way, I know I always drive by there. If I have to go to the dump, it's crazy how, how far west we've moved over the last five years. Yeah, very good. Um, I'm a West Sider, so I know exactly yeah. what you mean. There <laughs> seems to be no end to the end of West Side anymore. No. So, uh, yeah, pretty soon I think it's going to be funny. Is we'll probably be button right up to the uh, Sioux Falls landfill. You know, it won't be way out in the middle of nowhere anymore. But nope, nope, not at all. Uh, well, very good. Uh, we're kind of switch gears here and go to the, to the northeast side of town again. It looks like we're going from agricultural to light industrial. Uh, and conservation out on East Benson and 229. Yep, so this would be the north side of Benson and east of 229. Uh, some land that the Development Foundation owns and actually some land that the city of Sioux Falls owns. So they're working out to swap some property um, to do another user out there and then we would get uh, continue to retain kind of that land that we would use for drainage, drainage ponds out there. So just another example of the Development Foundation bringing some more jobs and really constructing some more industrial uses within their developments they have around town. Very exciting there. I mm -hmm. mean, yep. that kind of uh, investment uh, is just gonna do wonders for the city. So I'm yep, looking, forward absolutely. To, looking forward to see that come to fruition. Uh, looks like we're gonna head back to the southwest side of town, uh, ag into a single family. It looks like a preliminary mm -hmm. plan maybe, or, or in any case, 
we have some additional residential now on the southwest side of town. Yep, so this is actually a parcel that we just recently annexed in. So this is south a little ways as we start heading south of Ellis Road. You know, there wasn't recently, you know, two years ago, we didn't go south of 41st Street on Ellis Road at all. We kind of stopped at 41st Street. Sure. And so now this is almost the second subdivision south of 41st Street that we've recently annexed in. Um, and now they're looking to zone it and to do it, you're absolutely right, to do more of the um, residential uses and get on that that um, southwest side of the city and really hopefully support those commercial businesses that we've seen with like Fairway and Silver Star Car Wash and Starbucks on that northeast corner of 41st and Ellis. So. Sure, no, that uh, makes total sense down there and look forward again to seeing that come around. Um, southeast side, it looks like we're headed to now, another mixed uh, density uh, parcel here with mm. uh, some single family RD. Uh, Tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, so this is just west of the Harrisburg Middle School that they're constructing out there on 69th and Southeastern. Um, so there's quite a few of uh, apartments and then uh, the applicants looking to transition into some more uh, townhome type units um, sure. adjacent to the school. This gives them a little bit more flexibility to be able to do single family twin homes or possibly four unit townhomes out there. Um, after meeting with the applicant, it's kind of, you kind of get a lay of what maybe first time home buyer is and it seems like it's shifted away from single family on a lot to more of hey I, I own a, one of the fourplexes essentially one unit on a fourplex so trying to get some more of that housing stock and get people kind of in that Harrisburg school district that people seem to love so very good uh, switch gears here a little bit looks like we're gonna be looking at a couple conditional use applications here our first ones on West 41st Street uh, why don't you tell us a little about this one? Yeah, so this is uh, this is an area this we've been talking, it seems like a lot of places by 41st and Ellis Road, it seems like. So this is a little bit east on 41st Street, kind of east of the fairway development, and it's a live work parcel. Um, so what they're looking to do is some offices on the north side of this, and then right along 41st Street, they want to get like a drive through coffee shop, kind of one of those small um, scooters type places. Sure. And so that's where we would uh, then require them to do that conditional use to have that public hearing, um, this proposal though should should be be um, shouldn't be too big of an impact on the neighborhood since it's going to be adjacent to 41st Street and most of the residential is quite a ways to the north. So, well, very good. And it looks like we're going to try to balance 41st Street from yeah. east to west. We're going far east 41st Street now. Uh, for another yep. uh, conditional use application. Yep, so this is one you're absolutely right. It's gonna front 41st Street also right <laughs> on the west side of the Milky Way. Uh, just another car wash coming to town to build out there, so. Very good. Um, more exciting development out by the airport, it looks like, uh, with Sanford Sports mm -hmm. Complex, a planned unit development. Why don't you tell us about uh, this project? Yeah, so this is kind of an update to the signage plan for the entire Sanford Sports Complex, as we like to see these, and you guys probably see these amendments come in, you know, every year to every two years as things get announced and things get sold out there. Um, they just want to keep updating their uh, master sign plan and really see if they have to add additional signage or maybe they got to tweak a little bit of stuff with some of these new uses. And if you've been out there, you know, we're gonna have the the big uh, junior baseball field, soccer, mm -hmm. and so sure. there'll be some additional signage, wayfinding signage that they need to add out there, so. Excellent, well yeah, with all those different mm -hmm. uh, 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 facilities and such yep. like that, it definitely helps to have that type, yep. of, uh, Absolutely. That type of guidance. Uh, looks like our last item we're going to talk about is a, is a planned unit development, uh, Avera South Campus on South Louise. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, so this is another um, develop, initial development plan amendment uh, for the campus on 69th and Louise that Avera's been building out there with that really nice looking huge building they, they uh, uh, constructed. And so now they're looking at constructing actually that internal road that would take it from 69th Street all the way down to 77th Street. And then on the Very east side good. of that road they're looking to do a kind of a large parking lot for some future stuff that they're looking to do down the line so excellent always good to plan ahead when it comes to yes. parking around medical yeah. facilities the big <laughs> yes. medical facilities i think we all know the challenge that can uh, that can bring so, yeah absolutely uh, very good so yeah it looks like it'll be a, another jam-packed month it doesn't seem like we're slowing down a lot so you guys will have some additional 
decisions to make it seems like so always look forward to it yeah great and uh stay tuned sioux falls when we come back from break we're going to have butch warrington with our chief building official come on and really talk about the first six months of sioux falls our building stats um, and some large projects that we're going to be able to see coming up Hey, this is Seth with the City of Sioux Falls Housing Division. I'm here today with today's Home Maintenance Minute uh, to talk to you about your air conditioner and how to take care of it. So one thing that I like to do once a year uh, is to make sure, first and foremost, that your disconnect is turned off. All air conditioners should have a disconnect on the outside as well as on the panel. So you want to turn the breaker off at the panel, turn your disconnect off outside, and then you know there's no electricity in the unit. Okay, then if you look on the top, there's four bolts that hold this fan assembly on. If you take those bolts out, lift this assembly out and off and over to the side a little bit, just take a simple garden hose and go in around the fins on the inside of the unit and spray water from the inside out. And so if you look on the outside of an air conditioning unit, um, there are fins. It's much like a radiator in a car um, and they get clogged. They get clogged with cottonwood, trees, debris and, and leaves and dirt and dust and simply going in from the inside and pushing that material out with water um, will clean that up and you, it'll keep your air conditioner running much longer. Thanks for being with me today with today's Home Maintenance Minute. Welcome back to Planning Preview for the month of August. Joining me for our second half and our special topic today is Butch Warrington, our Chief Building Official with the City of Sioux Falls. How you doing, Butch? I'm doing well. Um, yourself, Jason? Oh, I'm doing great, and I can't wait to get into some of these uh, permit numbers that, that you brought along with us today. So this is our first six months, half a year, um, with the numbers that we got in front of, in front of us, and pretty impressive numbers, to the, say the least. To say the least, they yeah. are impressive, you know. We're not quite to a billion yet, but we're getting really close. And last year, it was the end of November when we touched that number. So we're four months ahead of that. Yeah, so. yeah, and you look at this, I mean, just some of the things I'm looking at here is last year we were almost at 500 million at the end of June. This year we're at 870 million, which is pretty impressive. So what, tell me something that really surprises you with that big jump. Did you feel like we'd be jumped that much already this year or did, is this a kind of a real big surprise for you? This was a surprise. I didn't expect it to be this much. I knew we were going to have a good year, but I didn't expect it to be jumping like this. No. Yeah. And what's one of the, the categories, because you kind of break them down, residential, commercial, industrial, what's one of the things that you've seen that you're like, gosh, I, I expected this sector to slow down a little bit, or this one maybe to move up faster than it is? The one that surprised me the most is the number of apartments we're building. We're building apartments all over the city, and a lot of them, and I expected it to stay about where it was mm -hmm. last year. Last year we issued 1,831 dwelling units for apartments. Well, shoot, we're already there, you know, so I didn't expect that to be that much, but you know, a lot of the big projects we knew were coming, like the Sharapas, the mm -hmm. Sioux Steels, uh, we knew those were coming, yeah. uh, and we knew um, that Sanford was going to put a couple of additions on. Yeah. So we knew it was going to mm -hmm. be a good year. So I don't know that we'll be able to handle this next year at the <laughs> same time, but we'll see what comes. And one of those things that we always hear from, you know, residents of Sioux Falls, gosh, we're building so many apartments, so we need to keep building apartments. And I know I've heard a little bit from the developers, and I bet you have too, that we're still at that high 90% occupancy rate for apartments. And that's not really where they like to be, right? That's right. Uh, I've talked to some of the managers too, and they like to see that a little bit lower because that way when somebody moves out, they have an a chance to update them and keep them in good shape. Well, now they're just pushing people through so they don't have that chance. So I think that number will start dwindling down mm -hmm. once that gets into that low 90s or something like that where they really want to see it. 
Yep, yep, and that's what I've heard from them too. It looks like uh, we're pretty much on par with our single family houses from last year, maybe a tinch lower, but uh, do you see that because the single family or housing market slowing down a little bit, or is it just they can't get the stuff in to build them fast enough? I think, personally, they're doing everything they can. Uh, they're maxed out, yeah. and that's why we're, we may be a little bit lower on single family, but townhomes were up just a little bit yeah. too, so they kind of work out, but I think they're doing as much as they possibly can with the workforce and the materials that they can use. Yeah, that's, that's one of the crazy things that I've talked to them too. It's like, we could do more, but we can't because we don't have access yeah. to the stuff that you're talking about to actually build them. So. Um, and then maybe let's get into a little bit. I know we've got, you guys do such a great job and this is what's great for people at home to know that you can find all this information we're talking about on, on the website. You guys organize it every month. You come out with a comparison for the last three years and then you really do the largest projects that we've done within the city and you break them down, even break out apartments and different things like that on. So maybe let's go through a couple of these exciting projects or maybe the ones that have that are have the biggest valuation so far. And I know you had talked a little bit about it. We've got Sue Steele that actually has pulled two permits, you know, and they're roughly what eighty million dollars or yeah. so for their two permits. Um, what was it like? Is that the biggest project you've seen downtown in your years, them at Sharapa? In downtown, this is as big as it's got <laughs> between Sharapa and Sue Steele. Yes. Yeah, to do those two and and one of the things, I, I mean, I always, I see your plans examiners and you guys working on these big projects like this, and you know, we kind of handle them from a zoning perspective, but we have a lot less stuff to work, work on or to utilize, it's a lot easier for us. How do they, how do they even just break it down to start working on one of these huge projects? I mean, I just, it just blows my mind how they can get through a plan sheet to 400 pages. Yeah, it's interesting, but you have to break it down into basics, you know? Will this construction type fit under that big a building? Or do we have to go to a higher type of construction, you know? And uh, it's based on not only area, but how tall it goes. So you have to break it down just like you would any other building into small little groups to see if it fits. And then you go from there uh, and don't let it overwhelm you. Yeah. And you know, it's an exciting time to be an architect yeah. with, in this. You know, because there's new buildings. The one of the ones mm -hmm. I think That's is great. the neatest is the Sioux Steel parking ramp yeah. with the donut around it yeah. of apartments, you know? Uh, that's something we'd never seen in the city of Sioux Falls, and it's really quite amazing. Yeah, and I think that's that's really awesome, too, that you talk about that, that there's just so many projects that are coming that we haven't seen before are, are different ways of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been really great. Maybe go through, we'll go through a couple of these other ones that we've seen. Um, We've got, you know, Harrisburg School District, they're building some stuff over on 90. I mean, it seems like they're putting a ton of money, the school districts. They are. Um, you've got two projects for Harrisburg. You've got the ninth grade academy and you've got the middle school also. You know, uh, I think that's like the fifth or sixth building that Harrisburg has put in the city of Sioux Falls now. Yeah, and that's over there on that 69th and Southeastern and that's another area that's all filled in. Mm -hmm. and really can't go any farther south of that school for a little while until we can do some more infrastructure with sewer but that area once that opens up for sewer you just feel like that's going to be the next big area just to start filling in completely you you know it will because everybody likes to be around a school yeah absolutely yep we've seen that before and then we've got those i know they did an article maybe it was last year but the powder house apartments yes over there off of 41st and uh, veterans parkway that's going to be um, biggest apartment complex in town so they've issued that one. Was that a different, unique experience trying to permit that one? You know, a lot of the apartments, people don't realize there's a lot of fire resistivities yeah. in apartments. They take a long time to review because you have to have fire resistivities between each and every yeah. unit, not only to the sides, but going up and down too. And then you gotta make sure that the um, stairways are able to be constructed such that people can get out in an emergency. <laughs> there's a lot of work involved in a apartment building. Yeah, and it's it's not as easy as you think just to build an apartment and do this and do that, but it's great how much how fast you guys get through some of that stuff because I know it seems like every day you get more and more and more stuff in trying to keep track of all that. 
And then it looks like one of these ones I know we always, uh, I always joke with our director Jeff is some senior apartments that I'm trying to find him. And we have that one that's going on 85th and Western here at the bottom. That's a $17.5 million project. Those are something, you know, I get asked about that a lot. We've had a couple senior apartments kind of come up in the last couple of, couple of years, but really not as many as I would have expected that to start construction on. Right, and I guess I don't know how they determine whether they want senior apartments yeah. or not, but uh, yes, we don't see a lot of them. Uh, we see a lot of smaller apartments too, but a lot okay. of right. them. And what's interesting to me is some of those three-story apartments don't have elevators in them. Really? Yeah, and that's interesting because then they take a guy like me out of the equation because I'm not walking up two flights of <laughs> stairs to get to that third floor. And I've seen, we've seen a lot of those too as you talk about maybe the um, downsizing housing that people are doing is, is with those slab on grades, those like mm -hmm. villa type things, those Z lots that we've seen just yep. tons of them being constructed. And maybe that's part of where our, our more older senior people are going that doesn't have a basement. They don't have a second level, they're just one right. slab on grade. Cause we've just yep. seen those blow up and I had never seen those, you know, eight years ago at all. And it just seems like they build them and they sell them, right? Right, and if they couldn't sell them, wouldn't build them. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. So maybe we got maybe just a couple more minutes here. Um, tell me about some, you know, so the second, give me some uh, foreshadowing for the second half of this year. What do you think you're going to see? Any big projects that should be coming in that you can see? Or maybe give me a, give us a, what you think we're going to get to for a building permit valuation. Well, one of the big projects we're going to have is Sanford's building on their ortho up there, yeah. uh, adding on to the building there. And that's probably going to be a $60, $70 million dollar project. And they're also building the MOB, which is a parking ramp with one floor of offices oh, really? above it, but it's capable of two or three more levels after that if they need them in the future. So that's an interesting one. Uh, the Airport is going to put on a parking ramp. That's another $50 million project or so. Um, we've got some other big projects coming, you know, and I, you know, we haven't done the wastewater treatment yep. plant. That's going to be a, a fair chunk. So I think by the end of the year, we're going to surpass 1.5 million, whether we'll get to 1.6, 1.7, I don't know, but. I think 1.5 is realistic. 1.5 billion dollars. Yes. And then last year we did 1.1. 1. 1. 1. Yes. 1. So that's another 40 percent more. So do you right. do you feel like I mean, if you had a crystal ball, is that you think we're going to surpass that in 2023? I know there's big projects in 2023, but that number just seems crazy. It's, it seems crazy, and I would think that number was probably going to be untouchable for a year or two, yeah. but I don't know that for a fact. I didn't expect this this year, so. Yeah, I remember when it was a big deal to get to 700 million a couple of years ago, and we're like, holy cow, and now we're at a billion is, you know, we're way over, we're shooting way over a billion. Yeah, it is. It, we're, we just keep going more and more every year, and thanks to the developers that have faith and confidence in our little city. Well, yeah, and I think it's thanks to your plans examiners, the permit tax, your inspectors that are keeping the city going and, and working as hard as they can. I mean, it seems like it never slows down where we used to at least have that time where you could breathe a little bit. So I know those, your team works their butts off and, mm -hmm. and they do a really good job. So appreciate yep. everything they do. So. Well, that goes with your zoning team too. <laughs> that's you right. Know, yeah. And we do work together so yep. well, and that's what's neat. Yep, it is. It's uh, we have a we have a really good team with our department at this time, and so it's great. So, yep. well, thanks for joining me, Butch, and maybe we'll have to have you on towards the end of the year to see if your prediction of 1.5 billion comes true. And then, you know, if you get it, then you should have went and to done the lottery or something. Well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Let's talk again come the end of the year or first part of next year. All right. Thanks a lot, Butch. You bet. And thanks for joining us for Planning Preview for the month of August. Uh, this uh, Planning Preview is for our meeting on August 3rd, the Planning Commission meeting. That's ha held at 6 o'clock at the Carnegie Town Hall. Um, we'd uh, love for anybody to come out and speak on those agenda items that we talked to about today, or even if if uh, you want to just speak on anything, we have an uh, option for public input at the end of the Planning Commission meeting. So thanks Sioux Falls and we'll see you next month.